good morning, folks. Good to see you online this morning. Hey, Kevin, Allison, James, Facebook user behind the veil. Uh, howdy, folks. I hope you're all awesome and well. Good to see you. Friday the 16th, my last day on the Wealth Coffee Chat lineup. Yep, I can. Um, uh, thanks, James. <laughs> Trying to spice things up a little bit next year. We're going to get uh, a little funky with our stuff. Yeah, go on the next level. Wealth, Wine and Wisdom has been rebranded, redone, re-energized, uh, which is kind of fun. And uh, Wealth Coffee Chats, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a little bit of a shine, give it a bit of a polish. Looking forward to something like that. Morning, Tim. Good to see you. Uh, just for everyone's uh, everyone to know, Andy Fenton and I, Wealth, uh, Wealth Wine and Wisdom, we're coming back stronger and better than ever, Fenton. Uh, first baby, first child in life, a little bit later in life, and uh, just making sure he spends quality time with his fam, get things going. So uh, keep an ear out for that one. Anyway, morning to you, Graham and Laura. Great to see everyone here today. What's going on? How are we? Uh, are you finished yet? I'll do some intros while things are warming up. Jason Witten's my name, if you didn't already know. Most of you do. Um, and yesterday, we uh, hung out and had a bit of a conversation, a bit of a chat about the five big things that kind of went down, went on, made uh, made a little bit of noise in 2022. Um, and they were inflation, interest rates, um, can't remember what we wrote. Can anyone remember what we wrote? Inflation, interest rate, construction prices, um, population, and rents. That's what it was. That's what it was. I remember now. Um, we had a conversation about those uh, and what impact they had in 2022. Uh, but today, I want to talk about three big ideas and maybe a fourth one for 2023. Not a big, not a big. Um, Deviation from yesterday's conversation. Morning. Morning, Margaret. Not a big deviation from yesterday's conversation. However, however, I think it's important to sort of check it out. Know what's going on in the world of investing for us as property investors for sure. Make sure we're on it for 2023 because I think it's going to be a good year. I think there's going to be a lot of things that uh, we wish we would have or should have or could have done if we don't. So let's get into it today. More demand, lack of supply. Boom, you've already nailed one of the three, Tim, uh, that's coming for uh, for next year, that is for sure. So let's have a little look at this. Um, I think I went to the wrong one. Here we go.
How's that? Is that better? Crikey. I was uh, I was rabbiting on for ages there, wasn't I? All right, take two. Um, thanks, uh, thanks, Tim. You were keeping the uh, you were keeping the crew um, <laughs> you were keeping the crew into it. Anyway, let's talk about this. We've got three, maybe plus a fourth. Um, <laughs> I was having a good yarn to myself then. Uh, I was on a roll, folks. Probably the best stuff I did all year. We missed it. Anyway, there you go. So let's reverse that one up. All right, there we go. Rents. Rents. That's what's going to happen. And are going to enter the country over this next three to five years. The next growth cycle will play out over the next three to seven. I think it's going to push all the way into sort of 20, late 20s um, and, uh, and 2032. And now I'm frozen. Ah, oh, are you kidding me? What's going on there? Right. Am I back? Am I back? Yep. Well, it's it's a <laughs> anyway. There you go. Uh, one of the uh, well, it's a it's a mix of uh, all the all the interesting times we've had this year together in um, in wealth coffee chats, isn't it? Wonder where we got to. Where where did we get to? Anyway, you can see it on the screen, which is good. Rents, population, supply, maybe a little bit of secret sauce. I think the I think the next rate cycle is going to grow or run for the next three to seven, uh, and it's going to push into the late 20s, 2020 20 something or others. Um, there you go. Yeah, you. I think you're going to be right there, Tim. And that's part of the, the secret sauce in supply. Uh, flight to quality is actually going to be, you know, more important than ever in our long-term uh, portfolio. So let's have a bit of a look at this. Rents, our national vacancy of our rental market dropped to a stunning 16-year low, 16-year low. Now, that's good for all of us if we own properties. It's very good for anyone who wants to buy an existing, or, or buy a new property into the future as well. Your servicing will be better. Um, and uh, if you look across each of the, each of the capital cities, um, you know, they all look pretty, pretty gnarly when it comes to the amount of properties available for leasing, uh, renting. And, uh, you know, let's face it, if you were to look at places like Sydney and Melbourne, and if you were to extract, if you were to minus out the CBD real estate, which is kind of, I would call that C-grade real estate, a lot of it, C-grade real estate, Certainly for property investors, maybe not for owner occupiers, depending on if you want to live close, like, you know, right in the CBD. If you minus out the CBD real estate, every single capital city, every single capital city, folks, is below 1%. Like ludicrous, crazy times when it comes to our rents. And so for you and I as property investors, that's going to drive some pretty significant things into um into the future. The other one, the next one for all of us is the population, right? The government has lifted the cap, uh, also lifted the cap up to 195,000 people in the next 12 months. And there's been more than 2 million, 2 million, 2 million, 2 million, 2 million applications processed since June. And um, that is pretty like pretty full on. Australia loves a good population boom. Certainly the east coast of Australia benefits significantly, but the west coast is not going to miss out. And uh, when all of us have a look at how that's going to play out in our world of property investing, certainly I think the uh, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane are going to be the clear winners when it comes to that, that, um, that stuff as well. And, um, you know, it's coming back hard and fast right now and uh you you can have a look we're like we need to get 
like a million people back into the country uh, to return to pre-pandemic levels. And uh, that's certainly 100% on the cards, team. And the international students, um, which will be great, they come back, uh, they're going to fill, um, you know, that uh, vacancy rate gap where, you know, you a lot of that CBD property is not necessarily that attractive to long-term rental um, or that style of real estate that's that's built for students to live in it isn't attractive and you should not be buying student accommodation, but it's bunched into those numbers. That's going to uh, soak up and then students are able to stay a little bit longer um, to work as well. Supply, absolutely, absolutely poleaxed. Um, team, and this is kind of wishful thinking, this stuff, I reckon. Check this out, all right? Um, down, 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 pipeline. Now, we might get a bit of a bit of a um, uh, a bit of a, a bit, uh, like a increase, but you have a look at the ones that are currently marketed and then currently um, plans approved. What's the big? What's the big? Um, what's the big challenge, folks, for this? For where we are, and um, what's the big challenge for this to continue or actually improve our supply? The big challenge is, can these developers actually get it done? Can they finance it? Can they get it sold? Can they get it constructed? Um, And the answer is, it's highly unlikely that many of those, like most of those projects will actually come to market and be completed. And if they would be to be completed, that will push out. So those sort of plans approved, see, see this plans approved and plans submitted, that's 2026, yeah, Alison, absolutely. <clears throat> Tim, approvals are a problem. So if that's 26, when would that stock, tell me now in the chat, if that's 2026, 2025, 26, when, how many years later would that actually come to market? Tell me the year, let's say 2025 to 26, when would that come to market? When would it be complete and actually start Team, when would it start to come onto the supply chain? So we're talking, yeah. Um, let's talk twenty. Let's talk twenty six. Two to three years later. So we're talking, you know, um, we're talking twenty twenty eight to twenty, like twenty thirty, like crazy times, right? If you think about that, where we are right now. Yep, about three years later, Graham, for sure, for sure. So telling you. There's a lot going on, and uh, we've seen the decrease of these markets, 84% decrease in, um, in supply. This is metropolitan Brisbane from a peak. You know, this is crazy right here. That's why we love Brizzy. It's undersupplied like there's nothing. Um, and uh, Melbourne, again. Uh, and Melbourne's a bit better supplied because its infrastructure is, uh, is better in that way. However, again, look at this, you know, uh, as we go along. So for all of us, we've got the rents, the population and the undersupply. They're the three big absolute, you know, absolute behemoths when it comes to what's going on for us as investors that we're going to positive effects on our property portfolio as we go into next year. And that will kick on. That will make that will make the It'll make the market move, shift in a positive direction. It's had a negative direction this year, but, you know, prior to the few years beforehand, you know, 5% down in comparison to 30% up, you're still up a bit, right? You're still all right. You're still all right. And your rents have gone up, like, significantly. Anyway, we talked about that yesterday. And then the construction prices, we talked about that one. I think it's worth noting. Construction prices are up. They're not going to come down either. I just want to talk about this supply chain, this supply issue thing. And I and um, I, I think I showed this not so long ago. You know, the gap, the expectation and completions gap, when we have a look at, um, when we have a look at, you know, the last 20 years. And uh, you can see the gap is the biggest, the worst we've seen, you know, 
in over 20 years when it comes to supply. Uh, and what does that mean? You know, how does that how does that pan out? Because when you look at you know the supply chain, and this was this is the um, this is the housing supply. So this is houses, and I was showing you the supply of apartments before, right? Um, um, am I on mute again? I don't know. Something's something's causing a little bit of grief here. Or did I did I did I pause again? No. Now my back. Jeez, not having a great time technically today, are we? <laughs> anyway, I should have just said Merry Christmas and see you next year. Uh, there you go. Ah, uh, anyway. How are we going, Alison? Let me know if I'm there. Let me know if I'm back. Anybody? Anybody? All right, that's good. I'm back again. Anyway, I'll continue on. Uh, we shall soldier on. We shall soldier on, folks. Um, all right, here we go. And uh, this is the this is the completion of houses, right? And so you can see housing completions or or supply often is fairly linear, right? It's not as up and down as as apartments because you have um, uh, it's easier. It's easier to supply medium density than it is to supply housing. And you saw here in sort of, you know, 20, uh, 2020 and 2020, oh, uh, 2018 and 2019, we had a dip. And then this kicked on, which was the, the you know, big giveaway, the, the free money giveaway from the government, right? Dollars, et cetera. But has that actually made any difference in the supply, right? Because we are record houses, record houses being constructed. Um, yeah, well, um, when you add, when you put the population, so if you go back here and you have a look at the supply is dead flat. Like the number of housing supply has not increased in line with the, with the, uh, with the population. So if you have a look at the population now, 26 million, and you go back to 20, 2020, back in tw uh, 2000 and 2020, this difference in 20 years, we were supplying the same amount of houses. It was the same amount of houses, folks, other than this little spike here. Exactly the same amount of houses. However, check this out. You know, uh, 20 years later, we have... 8 million people more. So the same amount of houses, but 8 million more people in the country. And this is how the line should have gone, but this is how it's actually gone. And the gap is massive. So what's the point? Houses are good. Houses are as a percentage of dwellings and um, places to live, reducing in... Um, reducing a number, and you should get on that bandwagon. That's what I reckon. At least have a house or two in your portfolio, a couple of well-positioned, awesome apartments, maybe a townhouse or two. You guys know the drill. We talk about diversification for location, income, style, and capital growth all the time. Jobless rate, uh, lowest jobs in, well, the, the lowest unemployment in forever. Uh, and, uh, hey, Aussies are pretty rich. We're not paying that much for our mortgages, even though the interest rates have risen. Um, we've still got plenty of dough, folks. Still got plenty of money tucked away. We're, we're fairly wealthy. Um, Australians are doing all right. Are doing all right. One of the little things for all of us to think about is the premium from houses to apartments. We talked about that one. Uh, infrastructure spending absolutely flying along. Check this out. Victoria getting absolutely bucket loads of money from the government. That's why we're absolutely bullish on Victoria now. We've been bullish on Queensland for, you know, three to five years and it's paid dividends. Uh, and we're very, very bullish on, on Melbourne. Yeah, let's face it, Melbourne for the dollars and cents, folks, as we go, where the infrastructure spending is at record highs, folks. Record highs. Record money being spent. Last but not least, every time we've ever seen a decline in property, um, on rolling property 
prices, you get uh, an up as well. You get an up, folks. Every time something does a little bit, something weird, you get an up. So we've had a bit of a down, and we will see uh, an up into the future. That's what's going on. And a few things to look forward to, which I think will push you know, this activity, this wealth, this creation of growth and momentum for us as property investors, things like the Olympic Games. We've got the Rugby World Cup. We've got the Commonwealth Games. Commonwealth Games, folks, in uh, Melbourne. So there you go. Plenty going on. Plenty going on. Anyway, other than a little bit of exciting technical glitches today, um, hopefully that was useful. Hopefully that was useful. Final, that was the final Wealth Coffee Chat for 2022. There you go, there you go. Hope the year went well for you. Still a few more, yep, still a few more days to go. Enjoy while you can. You guys have an awesome, amazing Christmas, uh, a great new year, and um, I'll be kicking off on the 23rd of January, folks, 23rd of Jan, having a nice little break. Make sure you put that one in your calendar. I think it's Monday the 23rd, I'm pretty sure. Let me see. Um, But uh, make sure, yep, Monday the 23rd, back at it for Wealth uh, Wealth Coffee Chats. Thanks for all uh, the the support this year and um, look forward to hanging out and catching up with you you crazy crew uh, next year. There you go. Done and dusted. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Be awesome. Be well. Remember, this thing's a marathon, not a sprint. Takes time. All right, folks. That's it. I'm done. You guys be awesome. Take care. Have a good one. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.